Hi, this is Carlos Claude from Blank United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining me for a Wednesday devotional. I'm going to invite you now to bow your heads and let's be in an attitude of prayer. Almighty God, we pray that you speak to us through the Holy Spirit, the word that we need to hear. May we be the people of God who learns to fall more in love with our God and discover the greatness of your love for us and the call that you have on our lives. We pray this now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Uh, we've been going through this series as we look at Proverbs uh, chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. And it's that, that passage that talks about this, the six, uh, seven things that the Lord hates that he cannot stand. Uh, let's look at that proverb one more time. Uh, would you read it with me? Proverbs 6. Uh, there are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. Now, we have spent the past few weeks talking about the haughty eyes, the lying tongue, and the hands that shed innocent blood, and then uh, a heart that thinks of wicked things to do. Today, we're going to focus on the feet. The feet that run rapidly to evil. So that's what we're going to look at. Um, I kind of shared um, that song that I learned when I was um, just a little kid going to uh, Sunday school class. And I think it's appropriate. Uh, remember it? It's, oh, be careful little eyes uh, what you see. Oh, be careful little eyes what you see for your father up above. Is looking down in love, oh, be careful little eyes what you see. And it goes on, be careful little ears what you hear. Or be careful little tongue what you say, be careful little hands what you do. And today we're looking at that last verse of that song, oh, be careful little feet where you go. Uh, that's just a real simple thing of remembering, you know, as Christians, we have been bought with a price. Uh, I belong to God. My body is a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. And that's my search, spiritual service of worship. Um, as we go through the season of Lent, <coughs> we are reminded as we talk about sin, the biblical definition of sin. Remember, the, the word uh, in the Greek for sin is hamartia. Hamartia means literally to fall short. So if we're looking at looking at sin and how we actually fall short, not so much of you doing a wicked thing, which that's bad in itself, but how you fall short with your eyes, how you fall short with your ears, how you fall short with your mouth, how you fall short with your heart, uh, with your feet, with your hands. Because God has a purpose, a call for us. We're, again, His. We are. These are His hands. These are his feet. This is his mouth. This is his ears, his eyes. He wants us to behold. It's not even so much looking at bad things, evil, but what you're not looking at, at the glory of God. It's not so much hearing terrible things, but it's not hearing the voice of God. So we want to focus on how we fall short of being, fulfilling what God calls us to to fulfill and being what God calls us to be. Uh, remember every day uh, in Israel, they start off their day with the Shema. Uh, read it with me. It comes out of Deuteronomy. It's, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Now that gives us that focus that we are called to love the Lord with all that we are, with all our heart, our soul, um, uh, with all of our might. Uh, it's to, we're supposed to be completely surrendered to Him. That, that includes our physical self, our spiritual self, the way we think, our mind. So today we're going to see if we can apply that to our feet. Uh, it, there's one of those six or seven things that God hates is feet that run rapidly to evil. Uh, we have to keep in mind, uh, we live in a world uh, that is prone towards evil. It's, I find it interesting at the Lord's Supper um, how Jesus wanted to wash the disciples' feet. And Peter said, no, not just my feet, but my whole body. He goes, no, only your feet. It's like your feet represent your connection in this world. He says, I've spoken God's word to you. I've, you, you are clean, except your feet. Okay, we have to be careful where our feet go. 
uh, and what we do with our feet. Um, I'm going to go back to, to Proverbs uh, chapter 1, and let's just read that because it really begins with a fear of God, and it ends up with our feet. Uh, read it with me. Chapter 1, verses 7 through 16. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath to your head and adornment about your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol, even whole as those who go down to the pit. We will find all kinds of precious wealth. We will fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us. We shall all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your feet from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they hasten to shed blood. Now, here at the very beginning of the book of Proverbs, it describes that temptation that we'll find in this world of our feet lining up with those who are running rapidly to evil, who are looking for opportunities to hurt to destroy, to kill, to rob, and it's to gain pleasures for themselves. And so the feet represent the direction you go, the faith that you live. Uh, when you become a Christian, it's so important that you realize that God even declares your feet as part of family. Now, how, why do I say that? Uh, if, if you remember the prodigal son, the prodigal son says, Dad, I, man, I don't want to wait for you to die. Give me my part of the inheritance now uh, so that I, I could spend it while I'm young. And so he takes it and he goes and he squanders it in a foreign country and a loose living. And then he loses everything. And then he, he returns home and he returns home <coughs> with nothing, uh, just, just uh, wearing rags and he's lost everything. And the father sees him from afar. And the father runs out to him. And this is what it says in Luke 15, 22, when the father sees a prodigal coming home. And he runs to him and he says, But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Now, the, the best robe is, man, you're part of the family. I mean, the hem represents that, the robe represents that, the ring represents the authority of being part of the family. Your sins are forgiven. But then he also gives them shoes, the sandals. <coughs> because the sandals, servants, slaves did not wear sandals, but the, but the children wore sandals. You are part of the family. Wherever you go, you are part of this family. You're wearing the robe. You got the authority of part of the family. Your sins are forgiven. See, God wants us to be a people that live our faith, walk our faith. We have to be careful that we walk towards God. We walk with God, purpose to fulfill the purpose of God, uh, rather than taking our eyes off of Him and looking at the temptations of this world, the riches, and then allowing our feet to run rapidly to evil. I mean, that's what he's talking about. Um, I like the, a picture of someone who ran rapidly. Um, remember when David uh, what, fought Goliath? And uh, it, remember, he went out to fight him, and Goliath is insulted because David comes out with a sling and a staff and five smooth stones. And, and Goliath looks at him and says, What, am I a dog that you come out to fight against me with sticks? And Goliath's a soldier, and, and don't remember the threat, and you can read that in 1 Samuel 17. It's interesting, though, that when Goliath finally gets mad and he comes to attack David, here's this giant, 10-foot-tall giant coming after David, this scrawny little boy with a sling. And he comes with his, his sword and his spear, and, and uh, what does David do? I mean, you have to keep in mind, the entire army of Saul, they are cowering behind protection. They're, they're staying away. You know, they're wanting to run away if anything breaks out and something goes bad. They're prepared to flee. But 
What does it say about David? Listen to it. Read it with me. It says, Then it happened that when the Philistine rose and came and drew near to meet David, that David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. Man, those are the kind of feet that God wants. Feet that run to his purpose. Feet that, that are, are expecting God to show up, expecting the deliverance of God. That, that God has made a difference in my life and he's going out fighting Goliath in the name of Yahweh or Yehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. And that's, that's what God wants from us. Um, he, our faith should make a difference. We should be people that have our feet always prepared to move out for God. In fact, at the Passover, when God commanded the Passover uh, for the children of Israel, and he told Moses, this is how I want you to eat it. Would you read it with me? Um, Exodus 12, 11. Now you shall eat it in this manner with your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now the sandals on the feet represent, and even though the loins girded and your staff in hand, it all represents I'm ready to go. The deliverance of God is at hand, and my feet are ready to go at God's word. That's how the church needs to be. We need to have our feet ready to follow after God, expecting God to deliver us. Um, I find it interesting that in the New Testament, Peter, remember the apostle Peter, he's a man's man. I mean, this guy is an awesome dude. And um, Peter has been arrested and put in the prison, uh, and they're having prayer services for him and praying for him to be rescued because the next day they're going to put him to death. And uh, uh, Peter is in prison. Listen to what it says here. And so Peter was kept in the prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church to God. On the very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and Guards in front of the door were watch, watching over the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared, and a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter's side, and he woke him up, saying, Get up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands, and the angel said to him, Gird yourself and put on your sandals. And then he said, Follow after me. That's interesting. It's almost like, Hey, you believe that God does miracles? Peter, they're praying for you to be, to be delivered. And just because you get, you're chained to two soldiers and you've got soldiers outside the door watching doesn't mean that God can't deliver you. Why are your sandals off? You ought to be ready to go. They ought to be saying, why are you wearing your sandals? Why, why are you in, a, in the ready position to leave? Because my God's going to show up any minute. And the angel had to tell him, put on your sandals. Uh, I think it's, it's actually interesting at the first deliverance from Peter when he was in prison. See, he's already been delivered before. An angel set him free uh, in Acts 5. Would you read that with me? Acts 5, 19, it says, But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the gates of the prison and taking them out, he said, Go stand and speak to the people in the temple the whole message of this life. This is an example of not only God delivering you, it's an example of where he expects you to go. He wants your feet to obey him, to go into the temple and to declare all the message of this life. See, the feet actually represent when it's, don't run to evil, but you run to the purpose of God, to the victory of God, the power of God, and to the mission of God. It's a matter of fact, the scripture uses the imagery of the feet of being the evangelist, bringing the message of the good news to this broken world. Now, it's interesting that when the Apostle Paul describes the, the, the armor of God, let's, I will just end with this last part, but look at it. Ephesians 6, 13 through 15. It says, Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything, to stand firm. 
Stand firm, therefore, having gird your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And now it goes on to talk about the, the helmet of salvation, the, the sword of the spirit. But I think it's interesting that he says, as part of the armor of God, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, that's the mission. The church, the church, when we get distracted and we're running after every temptation in this world, we're failing, we're falling short, harmatia, uh, hamartia, to, to fulfill what God calls us to be and to do. It's, that is our message, to, the, the shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We are supposed to be running out into this world, declaring to the lost the salvation of our God. Listen to what it says in Isaiah. It's um, Isaiah 52. Read it with me, 6 through 7. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, in that day, I am the one who is speaking. Here I am. Listen to what it says next. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace and who brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation and says to Zion, your God reigns. Church, you know what the biggest problem of feet that run rapidly to evil is that those very feet are purposed and counted on by God to be running to the loss of this world and say our God reigns. Our God reigns. Jesus is here. Jesus is the salvation of God. You don't have to be lost in your sin. You don't have to be bound up and, and oppressed by Satan. God is here and the deliverance of God is here. I love that passage in 2 Samuel uh, 18. And this is a, kind of a strange passage. I, um, I don't even know <coughs> if many of us know this guy by the name of Hamiaz. He shows a desire to bring good news. This is when David had been chased out of Jerusalem by his own son Absalom. And so the, there's a battle between Absalom's troops and David's troops. And, and, uh, and the victory was had and Absalom was defeated. And in fact, Absalom was killed. And uh, so it's a sad day because that's David's son. And even though he was attacking his daddy, his daddy did not want his son to be killed. Uh, so it was a mixed blessing of deliverance because David was delivered and the kingdom was delivered but it was at the cost of the death of his son um, and but there was a runner uh, and this runner was a good man and he wanted to run and tell the, the king that the victory is his the kingdom has been secured and uh, and uh, it was a day of salvation or deliverance but Joab says oh this is not good news because the cost of it was the death of his son and you're not going to get a good reward on this day. Uh, he says, you're not the, you're, you're supposed to bring the really good news. Um, let's let someone else run with this bad news. Listen to what it says. It says, then Ahimaaz, son of Zadok, said, please let me run and bring the king news that the Lord has freed him from the hand of his enemies. But Joab said to him, you are not the man to carry news this day. But you shall carry news another day. However, you shall carry no news today because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed to Joab and ran. And Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said once more to Joab, Oh, but whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. And Joab said, why would you run, my son, since you will have no reward for going? But whatever happens, he said, I will run. So he said to him, run. And Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain and passed up the Cushite. As you go on and read the story, he gets there first and he says, God has delivered you from your enemies. He just had this need to bring the good news. He didn't even mention anything about Absalom. <laughs> he let the Cushite do that. 
But he beat the Kushite there who had a head start because he wanted to be the one to share the good news. Now, what I like about that passage is, church, are we too enamored with the things of the world? Are we, are our feet running the wrong direction so that we have lost the excitement and the joy of running and declaring that our God reigns to the lost of this world, to the brokenhearted, to the downcast? See, there's a heart of bringing the good news. There's a desire. I've got to run. The evangelist is someone who has sent, someone who has sent with the good news, the, the, the good word. An apostle is a sent person. We, we have been sent. Go ye into all the world. We have been sent. We have a mission filled. And God wants you to put on your sandals as sons and daughters of the living God. You wear those sandals and you take the good news to this world. Yes, church, let's not do something that God hates and have feet that run rapidly to evil. And let's be careful that we don't follow the temptations of this world because you might even find churches or Christians that say, oh, yeah, let's, we want to, <clears throat> pray for God's blessing here in this life and pursue the things of this world. And so your feet are really running rapidly to the banks, running rapidly to success, to, to, the, to the glory of this world that is fleeting and not lasting, rather than running to the purpose of God and walking in his purpose. Because these are his hands, this is his mouth, and my feet are his feet. And he's told me what to do with my feet, to run rapidly to him. In fact, the place that I really like to take my feet, in a time where I think it's good to take off your sandals, is when you spend that time in the very presence of God and you bathe your feet in his glory on holy ground. Remember what God said to Moses when he turned aside and he went to see this bush that was burning, but not consumed. In Exodus chapter 3, a voice came out of that bush. It was the voice of Jesus. Then he said, Do not come near. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Church, I think that's one place we need to take our feet. Joshua had the same experience when Jesus showed up there and Joshua says, whose side are you on, our side or their side? And he goes, neither. <laughs> no, but I am the captain. I am captain of the hosts of heaven. I am the Lord's captain. Jehovah Sabaoth, who's who he was talking to right there, the captain of hosts. And he says, take off your sandals for this is holy ground. And Joshua stood on holy ground. Church, that's what we need to do. Let's be good stewards of our feet. May our feet be called beautiful. Beautiful as they bring good news to this world. Beautiful as they glow with the radiance of God's glory. Beautiful as they fulfill the purpose of God. It's been said, God has no hands or feet today in this world except for those in the church. These are the hands of Jesus. And these are the feet of Jesus. May the church be faithful to love him and serve him with our entire body, which has been bought with a price. Let's make a new commitment today. As if, how long has it been since your feet took you to church? There's no excuse. Put on your shoes. Let's expect God to meet us. But let's go to where God has called us to meet together. And let's make sure we spend time on that holy ground together and alone and keep your sandals on and expect God to answer prayer and God to use you to make a difference in someone's life. Would you bow your heads to me? Let's pray. Almighty God, we pray that you would consecrate our feet. May our feet run rapidly to your glory. May our feet run rapidly to, to that holy ground. May our feet run rapidly to to be a herald of the good news, of deliverance, of forgiveness. May our feet run rapidly to declare the possibilities of a God who says nothing is impossible for him. May our feet run rapidly to love and care for the outcast, 
those who are in need, may our feet run rapidly to stand where you would stand if you were with us right now. And you are with us in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. May we be found faithful. We pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Church, thank you for being with me today. God bless you and go in peace.